Hello, this is Dr. Maria Abdullah, and uh, in this talk we're going to explain about space analysis. Uh, and just to make sure where we are up to, after taking history, examination, and diagnostic reports from any patients who will undergo treatment, we need to go through uh, multiple stages of uh, uh, analyzing the information. Part of this analyzing of the information is the study model space analysis. So space ana analysis in the lower or the upper arch uh, is a way to describe the space condition. So we will have a well-aligned arch or crowded arch or space. And to do this, we need to calculate and measure space available, and then space required, and then use this formula, space available minus space required. If the result is negative, this means crowding. If it's positive, it means spacing. Space available is the amount of space within the arch, and it is measured from the mesial surface of the right first permanent molar to the left first permanent molar. So we don't include the molar itself, but we use its, this, this mesial surface as a reference to measure the space available. And of course, we follow the shape of the arch uh, for each individual patient. Space required, on the other hand, is the mesial distal of all teeth from the second premolar on one side to the second premolar on the other side. And here we're talking about permanent teeth, of course, not deciduous teeth. If the resulted measures is less than 4 millimeters, this is mild crowding. 4 to 8 is considered moderate crowding. More than 8 is considered severe crowding. And this is just um, a guideline. To do the space analysis, we need sharp dividers and ruler and a pencil. Uh, and of course our space analysis form. To measure space available within the arch, we need to divide our arch into six segments. The premolar segment that starts from the mesial surface of the permanent first molar all the way till the distal surface of the canine. So this is a premolar area. And then the second segment is the canine area. And then the third segment is the incisor area. And as you could see, every segment ends at a point where the next segment should start so, it, so that we don't get double calculation. So if we end here for the canine area, we need to start there on, on the same point for the incisor area. And then on the other side, the same. So we have incisor area, canine area and premolar area. So as you, as you can see here, we have space, but we need to calculate this one. So if you have your reference point here, this means that you calculated the space with the premolar area, that's good. But we need to start exactly here for the canine area so that we don't double calculate this space. So these six segments, we need to measure them. As you can see, this is the point of reference here. At the buccal side, within the impressure, not occlusally, not lingually or palatally, but buccally. So we measure this distance here, we measure this one here, we measure these six segments, we add them together and the result is the space available. So this is an example, as you can see the width point here, so from this point here all the way to this area here, this is the premolar area, and from this point here till there, this is the canine area. Regardless if we have overlap, it doesn't matter. We don't look at the alignment of teeth at this point. We just look at areas. We just measure space available. And then we measure the incisor area on the side. And exactly where we ended, we measure, we start to measure the incisor area on the other side, and then the canine area, and then the um, Premolar area. So it's like we divided this arch, this total arch, we divided it into six segments. So they need to be continuous. 
we add the measurements together and then we get the total space available. And now we need to measure the space required. As we said, the space required is the total meter to square of feet. And this is easy if I have um, all permanent teeth erupted. But if they're not, then we have multiple ways to predict the width of the unerupted teeth. And we're going to use Tenneke and Johnson's prediction uh, values and formula. And we're not going to use the original formula, we're going to use the Jordanian one. So um, uh, there was a study that actually uh, measured the uh, mesodistal width of teeth and the uh, uh, adjusted the uh, original formula to uh, to suit the Jordanian uh, population. The formula would say that in the upper arch, we use the mesodistal width of the lower incisors multiplied by 0.46, and then the result we add to it in 0.94. The results will give you the mesodistal width of the unerupted P9, first premolar, second premolar, premolar on one side only. Now, in the lower, we also use the width of the lower incisors. So, as you could see, the reference is the width of the lower incisors in both upper arch and lower arch. So, we use the music is the width of the lower incisors, the four lower incisors added together. We multiply this by 0.55, and then the result we add to it 8.43, and the total value is actually representing the nisa distal width of the K9, first premolar, second premolar, premolar on one side only. So this is our uh, report, space analysis form. The first part is just to remind you the formula, you don't have to memorize it. It's there, you just need to apply your numbers. And then we have the lower arch. We need to measure the knees to distal width of the lower incisors. We add them together and then we put the results here. This is the first thing we do when we go with the mixed dentition space analysis. Space available, as we said, we calculate the, knees, the uh, length of the six segments that I just showed you. We add them together and then we put the results here. We don't only put the results here, we need to put the numbers uh, at the rest of the line so that we know exactly where we got this number, where we got the total. So you have to have here like six numbers representing the uh, length of the six segments. Following that, the space required. When I reach the space required, as we said, we need to use this formula in the next addition because I don't have all permanent interrupted. So what I do is I take the number that represents the lower central and lower in lateral incisors width, and I insert it in the lower arch formula. And then the total should be multiplied by two, because as I said, the number that comes from the formula actually represent only one side canine and premolars width. So I have to multiply it by two, and then I have to add the labial segment, I have to add the Means it is the width of the upper inc of the uh, incisors. In this case, I add the number here because it represents the uh, total means it is the width of the lower incisors. And after that, the number that I got from space available minus the number that I got from space required should give me the space condition. If it's positive, then I write it here. It's spacing. If it's negative, then it's crowding, and I have to decide if this is considered mild or moderate or severe. Next part is the upper arch, exactly the same. Space available, I measure the six segments. I write them over here, add them together, and then the total I write it between brackets. Space required, I use the first formula, and I use the meso width of the lower incisors. I insert it in this formula, and then the result I write it over here. I multiply it by 2 again because it represents the meso width of the K9 and the premolars on one side only. So I have to multiply it by 2 and then I have to add the meso width of the upper incisors. B. 
because this is the upper arch. So I have to measure the mesodista width of the lateral, the central on one side, and on the other side, add these four numbers together, and then add this to the uh, results I got from uh, multiplying the uh, upper arch formula results by two. Okay. And then space available minus space acquired will give me the space condition, and I just fill it here. Just important rules to follow when you apply your space analysis. The rule number one, as I said, permanent molars should not be involved in the space analysis. Rule number two, the lower incisor's mesodistal width should be used for the formula for both arches. Rule number three, deciduous teeth should not be measured. You should not measure the mesodistal width of the deciduous teeth. It's not relevant. You're going to lose them anyway. Rule number four is that the number produced from the formula represents the mesodistal width of the canine and premolars on one side only. So I have to multiply it by two, and then you add the mesodistal width of the incisors according to the arch. Rule number five, write down your numbers and show what you measure. So I don't need the final number only, like for example, 90. No, I need to know where you got this number. So you need to show me exactly the formula, how you applied it, multiplied by two, etc., etc. all the numbers, all the steps. And finally, you need to remember that the measurements are made in millimeters. This is another example. This is a, an arch that is crowded, so you just need to measure six segments to look for the space available. And it starts from the mesial surface of the six all the way to represent the premolar area, the canine area, the incisor area on one side, and then the incisor area on the other side, canine area, and then premolar area. If you add these together, this will give you the space available, and then the mesodista width of each tooth will give you the space required if all permanent teeth erupted. Otherwise, you have to use the formula to get the space required. So we're going to start with this case. It's a mixed dentition case. As you can see in the lower arch, we have the first permanent molars and the central incisors and the lateral incisors, the only permanent teeth. The rest are deciduous teeth, 6DE, 6DE on both sides. Now we need to analyze this case for our space analysis. This is the upper arch. The same, it's the mixed addition, only permanent, molar, and central incisors, laterals. The lateral on the right side is partially erupted. The rest are deciduous teeth, the CDE, CDE on both sides. The first thing we're going to do is to fill the first number in our item. In the lower arch, we have the lower central and lateral incisor width. So we need to measure the mesodistal width of all four lower incisors, and we need to follow the widest part using our divider. So we measure the mesodistal width of the central and lateral incisors in the lower arch, and we follow the orientation of teeth. If it's rotated, if it's displaced, I just follow and measure the widest part like this. And after that, I just transfer these measurements to the ruler. Don't forget to start from zero. And we just measure it as six millimeters. We register the numbers and then we move on to the next to the next incisor. We measure it 
we transfer this to the ruler. Don't forget to start from zero again. Again, this is six millimeters. We continue with the measurement of the central. Again, we follow the lightest part. We transfer this to the ruler. And it's about six millimeters. We just need to adjust. Yes, that's it. And now we move to our last incisor. We measure it. Transfer the measurements to the ruler. And register the number. Don't forget to start from zero and again it's six millimeters. So in the first item, I just write down my measurements. So this would be six millimeters four times. So this is 6, add 6, add 6, another 6. So all lower incisors are 6 millimeters, and the total is 24 millimeters. Now we need to move to our second item, that is the space available in the lower arch. Space available is the measurement of 6 segments within the lower arch. These six segments start from the mesial surface of the permanent sixes all the way to the distal surface of the canine. And here we're measuring areas. We're not concerned about erupted teeth, deciduous teeth, uh, displaced teeth, repeated teeth. It doesn't matter. We are dividing the arch to six segments. Every segment ends at the point where the next segment starts. So we start with the premolar area. The divider we just go to these areas. We approach this area buccally, not lingually, not occlusally. And we make sure that we actually go deep into the embrasure. So we transfer this <coughs> to the ruler, and this should represent the length of the first segment. So we start from zero and this is about 19. So we write it down. So the first segment is 19. Next is the canine region. Again with a divider, we look at the canine region, we go deep into the embrasure, we approach the area buccally. Doesn't matter if the central is erupted, the lateral erupted, oriented, displaced, doesn't matter. We are looking for areas. We transfer the number to the ruler. It's about seven millimeters. So we write it down. And we continue doing the same for the rest of the segments. This is the incisor area. We make sure where we ended in the previous segments, exactly where we start for the next segment, so that we don't have double measurements. So with the comb with the with the segment, we transfer the measurement to the ruler.
starting from zero. So this is about 12 and a half. Next is the incisor area on the other side. We just make sure that we're measuring it. We approach it buffily, but we go as deep as possible. And we transfer these numbers to the ruler again. And this is 12 millimeters. So we have two more segments to go, the canine area. It's about six millimeters. And then finally the premolar area on the other side. We go as deep as possible, we measure it, we transfer this to the ruler carefully, it's 19 millimeters. So we add these measurements together. And we end up with 75 millimeters and a half, and that should represent the space available in the lower arch. So that's 75.5 millimeters, and now we need to go to the space required. I use the formula for the lower arch. And I use the mesodistal width of the lower incisors that I already have, and that's 24, multiplied by 0.55, and then the result I add to it 8.43. So I do this, and the result should represent the mesodistal width of the canine and premolars on one side only. And to get the space required fully, this number should be multiplied by 2 to represent both sides, and then we add the labial segment to it. So here we got 21.63 using the lower of course by inserting it into the formula. We multiply it by 2, and then, of course, we add to it the 24. So we could use a calculator. So as you can see here, we're going to use the calculator to show you the results. 24 is the lower incisal width. We multiply it by 0.55 according to the formula for the lower arch. The result is 13.2. We add to it 8.43. And then the result is 21.63. As we said, this is for one side. So we multiply it by 2. And then the result, we add to it. 24, which is the lower incisal mesodistal 67.26. So we add this to our form. Okay. 
And now we start to calculate the space condition. So 75.5, that is the space available, minus 67.26, that is the space required, and the result is 8.24 plus, which means that we have extra space, we have spacing. If the result is minus, it's crowding, and because this is plus, it's point. 8.24 plus, so this is spacing. Now we move to the upper arch, and in the upper arch, we follow exactly the same steps. Space available, we have to divide the upper arch into six segments the premolar area, canine area, incisor area. We approach the segments buccally as deep as possible within the imprager. We transfer this to the ruler. We do the same for the canine area. And as you could see here, we have partially erupted lateral, so I don't take this into consideration. I just stop at the mesial area of the canine. And then we move to the incisor area. Here I have diastema, so I have to choose one reference point and stick to it. So if this is my reference point and I end my segment here, then I start my sec second segment from the same reference point. So we measure it, transfer it to the ruler, register it. I have to write it down and then the next part where we started, we end and then we start the, second, the next segment. Six continuous segments. This is the canine area. Again, we measure it, and then the uh, premolar area as deep as possible into the imprager. Okay, so we register these numbers accordingly. We don't only write the total, and that's 16, 7, 16 for the incisors, 15 for the incisors on the other side, 6 for the canine, sorry, 7 for the canine area, and 16 for the premolar area. So we add these together, and we end up with 77 millimeters. Now comes the space required, and the space required is uh, definitely by using the formula because I don't have all teeth permanent teeth erupted. And I insert in the formula again the lower incisor width. And this is multiplied by 0.46 according to the formula. Okay. So we multiply it by 0.46. And then the result, we add to it 10.94. I'm just following the formula that you will already have on your space analysis form. You don't have to memorize it. So I write this down. It's 21.98. And this represents the K9 premolar width on one side only. So I multiply it by 2. And then the result, I add to it the upper incisors, mesodistal width, of course, because this is the upper arch. So I go to my upper study model and I measure the mesodistal width of the permanent lateral incisor, central incisor on, on one side and the other on the other side. I measure it following the widest part of the two. Since the lateral incisor is partially erupted, we will assume that the one on the left side is equal in mesodistal width to the right side. And now we write down our measurements. The total is 31 millimeters, and this includes the huge incisors of 9 millimeters each. 
uh, central incisors, and then 6.5 mm for the lateral incisor. This one we're going to multiply by 2, assuming that the other side is equal. So if we use the calculator, we will end up with 74.96. Right. And now, space available minus space required, and this should give me the space condition. Seventy-seven minus seventy-four point nine six, and this is two point zero four plus. Again, this is spacing. So this is how we carry out our space analysis, step by step, following the equation. Just make sure that you follow the right equation for the right arch. In the equation, we always use the lower incisor width, and we always use millimeters.